I like cooking. I really do. Um, I like it so much that when my husband and I got married, instead of like splitting the cooking 50, 50, like we'd originally planned, we decided that I'll do the majority of the cooking and he'll clean up after me, which honestly, that's great. That makes me enjoy cooking even more because I don't have to do the dishes. And, and cooking dinner specifically for me kind of replaces my commute time from work. I work from home. And so cooking just kind of gives me that time to transition from I've been working all day to I'm sitting down, I'm relaxing with my husband. We're talking. Um, it gives me time to think, listen to music, listen to an audiobook, whatever. But there are days that even though I enjoy cooking, I just don't want to do it. Maybe it's been a hard day and I'm emotionally spent or maybe I'm just tired, or maybe my anxiety has been flaring up and I've been super stressed. And that's also exhausting just in a different way. But whatever the case is, I need to make sure that the thing that I'm have the food for in the house is something that we can actually make and eat, whether I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it is a super easy recipe and it's not intimidating, um, or whether I'm going to tap out and have my husband help me. So um, really what I've been trying to do over the past few months is make sure that the recipes are easy enough that it doesn't matter a really like anxious, sad, depressed Julianne can make them or Andrew can make them. Anyway, those days where I don't want to cook, those are the days that I am really grateful that I've gone simpler with my cooking because I used to just like get takeout, which is not bad. There's nothing wrong with getting takeout, but for us, um, that's going to break our budget if I am having a tough week. And that just makes me feel worse about the fact that I am stressed or anxious or just don't want to cook. And so, um, simplifying the recipes that I make has been key for me. And I'm not actually talking about taking a complicated recipe and making it simpler. I'm talking about choosing recipes that are simpler to begin with, have fewer ingredients, use less pots and pans, take less time. That way I can do it usually even if I'm not really feeling like it or if I am having a really tough day and I can't do it, my husband is able to do it without really a lot of fuss or time. So this video is basically me documenting what I've learned on this like cooking journey so far and I hope it helps you. I'm gonna give you the names of the like specific books and stuff that I use at the end of this video. But before I do that, I just wanted to kind of explain my motivation, philosophy, whatever you want to call it when I'm cooking, just sort of the ways that I'm approaching it so that you can know if what I'm saying is going to be a good fit for you. So if you're just interested in answers, fast forward to the end of the video. I'm sure that it's there. Um, but it's probably a good idea to just watch through this first to make sure. Okay. The first thing for me is that I need to change my food options up. I'm okay with eating the same thing for like breakfast or lunch or breakfast and lunch, but for dinner, I really want it to be something different. I like trying new foods, but actually more than that, if I am going to be cooking, I like to not be bored. I like to be trying to make a new recipe. This past weekend, I made a really like easy version of Eggs Benedict that had a microwave hollandaise sauce, which I realized is not at all authentic. Like there is no chef in the world that is going to uh, be like, oh yeah, microwave hollandaise sauce. That's the best. But you know what? I made it and it tasted good. And I was really proud of myself because I've never made hollandaise sauce before. And so those are kind of like the moments that changing up what I'm making really gives me. And I like that. Um, if you're the kind of person that wants to eat the same things every day, you just, you know what you like and it's comforting to you. I think that's amazing. Like there is no shame here. This is a no shame zone. And you may actually not need a lot of the things that I'm about to talk about in this video, because you can probably just pick some dishes that get like fill you up and give you the nutrients that you need and just cook those. Like it's very simple. You can cook the same thing every day or you could batch cook or like whatever. Uh, but for me, I need to change it up. Oh, I think, I think I also forgot to mention that like another advantage to changing it up for me is that my husband and I have different tastes and like what we like and our favorite genres of food. We have a lot of overlap too, but there are some things that are like on the fringe or like that's more one of his foods and then, or that's one of my foods. And so when I'm changing it up, I'm able to draw from all of the things, like the things that he likes, the things that I like, the things that we both like. So neither of us feels like we're always having to eat food that isn't our favorite or that we don't like, because we know like, oh, hey, if you know, this meal that we ate on Tuesday was like maybe a four or a five for me, that's okay because 
because later in the week, we're probably going to eat like a 10. The second thing that is really important to me is staying within the food budget. I have to make sure that all the stuff that I'm making isn't super expensive. So for me, actually right now, that means that I need to stay off of Pinterest. I really do have to choose my expensive ingredients carefully. Um, and so finding foods off Pinterest and just choosing based on how they looked a lot of times, you know, those salads, for example, have like a bunch of ingredients. People aren't necessarily designing them for budget consciousness. Some of them are, some of them aren't. They're like designing them more for taste or for like, you know, how trendy they look. And um, so I just, I need to make sure that I stay within our budget and I don't get like distracted by a bunch of shiny objects. I also just try to make sure that I'm incorporating some meatless meals into our food plan. I feel like not buying as much meat is a huge <laughs> budget saver for us. And I do stock up on eggs just to make sure that we have like a cheap protein in the house if we need to add it to something or just want to eat it for a meal. The next thing is it needs to be like not super complicated or long to make because cooking takes a lot more effort when I'm overwhelmed or tired or stressed out or anxious. And I know that I'm going to have those days. And I also know that I'm probably not going to be able to predict them when I'm mapping out the menu for the week. And so having a selection of foods that are easy to make and quick to prepare means that first of all, I'm more likely to be able to just go ahead and make them if I'm having a tough time. And if I can't, then I don't feel as bad handing it off to my husband. The next thing is I want our food to be pretty good for us. Um, I wanted to have some vegetables. I wanted to have some protein, even if it's just like beans and rice. Um, I don't want it to be like super high in sugar or like saturated fats or things like that. Uh, basically, I don't want to be eating like fast food food all the time or like frozen dinners that are super high in calories. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating those things sometimes. If I had the budget and the time for it, I probably would be like one of those farmer's markets, organic only girlies. But I also know that like, that's just not the priority in my life right now. I need to focus on the things that we can afford to do. Um, and so um, just making sure that there are vegetables and there are proteins and the dinners that I'm making for us is just kind of my baseline there. Like if there's not a vegetable in the entree, when I look at it, I make sure that I plan like, okay, we're going to have some roasted broccoli with it or whatever. And then you've probably picked this up already from what I've said, but I do menu plan. Um, I know a lot of people don't love menu planning because they want to be able to eat what they want to eat when they want to eat it. And I've heard from like other people and places that like sometimes they just pick a list of dishes that they're going to make and buy the groceries for that. And then they assign the days later. I assign days. And then if I look at what the day's food is and I'm not feeling it, I usually will just switch it out with another day. But that allows me to buy the groceries that I need and make sure that we have them on hand. Um, and it also just takes a lot of the decision making off of my plate on a day-to-day -day basis. I just kind of put that all into like a concentrated hour when I'm ordering my groceries and doing my menu planning and that works for me. I do not do batch cooking. I, I do occasionally do it for breakfast. Like I'll make my overnight oats, a big batch of them. But um, most of the time for dinners and things like that, I don't do batch cooking. There's a lot of reasons for this. Some of it is like personal preference. Like I don't really like... You know, I wouldn't really want to eat the same thing for dinner four nights in a row. Um, I don't really like frozen food that's been reheated so much all of the time. I mean, some of it I do, some of it I don't. Um, but then there's also just the case of like, I'm already choosing meals that I can make in 30 minutes or less. So like doing four hours worth of meal prepping on the weekend, that's actually not how I prefer to spend my weekend. I'd rather do a little bit every day and spend about the same amount of time. Um, instead of like concentrating it all on the weekend. So that's my preference. I think that batch cooking works really well for some people. It just isn't really my thing. So I've got behind me actually my three books that have been pretty indispensable for this. And none of them are like super new cookbooks. So if you want to go to your library, or like check out thrift books or something, I'm sure that you can get them there. Um, two of these, I kind of grew up with my mom using occasionally. And this other one I got more recently at a thrift store. I like that the recipes are in them are filling. They are easy to prepare. And the people who wrote these cookbooks for the most part were thinking about the cost and the health of what they were making, but also making it like 
simple for you to prepare. So uh, this first one, this is like my favorite one. This is called Cheap Fast Good. It is by Beverly Mills and Alicia Ross. And basically the whole concept of this book is making sure that the recipes in it are cheap and fast and, <laughs> and good. Um, there's a lot of skillet suppers, a lot of pasta dishes. Um, they have vegetarian options. They have meat options. This is just golden. Um, some of my favorite recipes in this particular book are their individual chicken cobblers. Actually, well, this cookbook was my mom's before she got another copy and it like just opens to individual chicken cobblers because pretty sure that was her favorite too. Um, another one is called Ultra Easy Veggie Case. It's a really easy like souped up quesadilla recipe that literally takes like 15 minutes to make. And then um, oven fried drumsticks. We just had those a couple weeks ago and I loved those. Next one is actually by the same ladies and it's called Desperation Dinners. The point of this book is that you can make the meals in 20 minutes or less. Um, some of that means that you're using a little bit more expensive ingredients. So, um, I just kind of look at the recipes and go like, okay, this is fast. And you know, maybe I don't need to buy the pre-chopped onion. I'll buy just like a regular onion instead. And it'll add a minute to the prep time. So, um, you do kind of have to think and take the price into account more with this book, which is why the other one is my favorite, but this adds some variety. Um, some of my favorite dishes that I've made so far from this are side eggs Benedict and presto pesto soup. Okay, final one. This is called College Cooking by Megan and Jill Carl. I really have no idea where this book came from. We found it at a thrift store and it is just, it is just a treasure. Some of the recipes in here are kind of basic, um, but all of them are designed to be made like basically in a college dorm room. And so a lot of times they use minimal pans and ingredients because you don't necessarily want to have to walk a whole bunch of ingredients home from the grocery store. I feel like they're your typical college girls and they're like, they're concerned about being healthy and making sure you have time with friends and stuff like that. All these recipes, even though I'm not in college, are exactly what I'm looking for. So some of my favorite things in here have been the chicken parmesan recipe, beef chimichangas, vegetarian chili, and ratatouille, which the ratatouille is so good. I'd never made it before and it serves like a huge batch of people. They've got like a party section in the back and that's been a lifesaver when we've been having people over. And the recipes in here are also cheap because you know, college students. So those are the three cookbooks that I've been using recently and that I found to be like super, super helpful for this. Um, there's a couple other resources that I haven't personally checked out, but that I do feel like based on the other resources I've read from these ladies would be helpful. The first is called the Lazy Genius Collective. She has a recipes section on her website and I will go ahead and link to that in the description. Um, I just took a quick look at it and she does love to bake and cook. And so some of those recipes may be more like, oh, hey, like this is a relaxing thing you would do on a weekend versus like a weeknight. Um, but she has a lot of recipes there that are just like really easy to prepare, but taste and look great. And then the other one is the Struggle Care Cookbook by Casey Davis. I haven't bought that, but I loved her book, How to Keep House While Drowning So Much. I feel like she gets it. And so like any of her recipes are gonna probably fall into these categories as well. And so, yeah, that's it. That's what I have. I hope that helped. Um, if you have any like favorite recipes that are cheap and easy and uh, quick to prepare and like kind of healthy and delicious, please feel free to let me know, mention them in the comments and um, I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.